Welcome to our CAA Football 12 Teams in 12 Days season preview. Today, we take a look at the New Hampshire Wildcats, and to help us do that, we bring in the play-by-play -play voice of the Wildcats, Bob Lippman. Bob, thanks for joining us. Rob, it's great to be with you today, and it's really great to be back on the football field, and I hope that uh, we get in a little bit more than the one-game season that we had in the spring. Let's start right, right there. It's certainly a difficult and very frustrating season for the Wildcats getting just that one game in against you, Albany, before having to deal with multiple cancellations and eventually shutting the season down. But what, if anything, do you think they were able to gain from the spring that might provide some momentum or some help going into the fall? I think it's just that opportunity to, to get out and to work together and to get through the playbook and to, and to get everybody healthy. Uh, while uh, UNH, uh, of course, uh, only got the one football game, and as you mentioned, uh, they did have an opportunity to work together uh, for Coach Mack all uh, during the spring. And, you know, we, we lost uh, Coach Mack for one season there while uh, he battled illness, and everybody was just uh, really looking forward to what was going to be a, a fall season uh, to remember. And then we had the COVID hit. So I think uh, everybody pulled through. Uh, they worked hard, uh, got to know the, each other in the, in the playbook a little bit better. And so I think that that's going to benefit the team coming out. Let's start with a look at the uh, Wildcat offense and Max Brosmer returns at, at quarterback. He kind of got thrown into the fire as a true freshman in 2019, but uh, also back some talented backs with Carlos Washington and Dylan Labe. And then some depth, I think, at the wide receiver and offensive line spots. Uh, what do you like about this group and who are some guys, guys that we need to keep an eye on? Yeah, well, you, you certainly start with the quarterback, and Max Brosmer had that year of experience. He was coming off of uh, a knee surgery as well, so he wasn't as mobile, didn't get quite into the weight room early on uh, in his career, but has uh, certainly uh, emerged as one of the leaders here. Coach Mack even uh, yesterday suggested that uh, Brett Edwards, who is going to be his backup, is a guy who may play a key role this season. Uh, you go back to all of the runs that uh, UNH has made over the years, and you almost always need that second quarterback at some point. So it's it's good to have both working on the, the same page. Uh, it's going to be a very balanced offense. This is a group that can throw the ball, and you mentioned some talented receivers are, are going to be back there. They've, uh, they've tried to develop the tight end position a little bit, and uh, we'll see whether or not uh, Kyle Leptowski moves uh, to the front of that group. The running backs, uh, I think, and I've said this for a couple of years, Carlos Washington has the, uh, the skill set uh, to be among the elite runners in uh, the CAA. He is well over 1,000 yards in his career. Uh, he can help as a pass uh, catcher as well. And uh, the dual threat there of Dylan Lauby uh, is, is going to be uh, is big uh, for UNH as well. Defensively, it would appear that the Wildcats straight starts in the secondary with an All-America safety and, and Evan Horn, Pop Bush, some guys like that back. But there's also some experience up front, Nico Kavikas and, and some others up front. Give us a breakdown of the, uh, of the Wildcat defense. Well, you mentioned that uh, the group of safeties that UNH has is, uh, is elite in this league. And, and it all starts with Evan Horn, who's back with the program for another year and uh, had some opportunities uh, maybe to, to look elsewhere. But uh, the fact that he's back and is uh, with uh, Pop Bushes there, Max Oxendine got a, a lot of reps in the secondary uh, as well for UNH, makes that a really good group. Uh, if there is, uh, I think, one little bit of a concern, it's going to be the rush from the defensive end positions. I think interior uh, defensive line's really good. Uh, Elijah Lewis and Nico Kavikis are, are fine, uh, experienced, and then you have to try to replace a real good one in Brian Carter for a defensive end. Gunnar Gibson is still in the program uh, for UNH, so from that standpoint, pretty solid. Linebackers will be fine. Uh, in fact, uh, UNH has used a pretty much a, a 4 2 5 kind of configuration. Might see a little bit more of the, uh, the 4 3 this year, but uh, in any event, I think that defensively, uh, they're going to give UNH have plenty of opportunities to win games. Take a quick look at special teams because those always uh, are, are big for every team. Anybody that stands out to you, either in the kicking or return game, that might have an impact. Yeah, I, I don't know uh, kicking game how it's all going to play out, but there are some guys uh, fighting uh, for spots there. Jordan Kahn is probably at the top of the table there. But this is a special teams unit, Rob, that is going to score points. Uh, and whether it comes on, as we saw in the U Albany game, a block punt that led to a touchdown, 
or whether or not uh, it's Evan Horn, Carlos Washington Jr., one of those guys uh, to be able to bring something back in the return game. Uh, it should be a pretty good unit. We, we all know uh, the success that uh, New Hampshire's had under Coach Mack, 14 straight years to, to the playoffs. This team uh, picked fifth in the preseason poll. Just give us your keys to, to seeing this team get back to the playoffs this season. It's a team, right, that always uh, carries the chip on the shoulder, Rob, and we haven't played a playoff game now since the end of the 2017 season when that 14-year streak came to an end. Uh, just missed making it with uh, the interim coach Ricky Santos a couple of years ago, so that is clearly back on the radar. UNH wants to return to the postseason, and to do that, you have to win some games on the road, right? In, in the CA because if you don't win some road games, you're not going to have enough wins at the end of the year. So we're going to certainly look at that Stony Brook opener that's uh, that's going to be a, a big one uh, for UNH as well. I think the schedule kind of breaks fairly well for uh, the Wildcats. Uh, some of the teams that are being mentioned as the top teams in the league, James Madison and, and Towson and Richmond are all coming to Durham this year. And so what that from that standpoint, I think that uh, the Wildcats are going to fare pretty well and, and be pretty competitive. I, I saw the announcement from the university the other day that we're going to be back with uh, with fans in attendance. And so that's certainly going to add uh, to the entire atmosphere of what uh, UNH football is is all about. So looking forward to a, a big season of A, the first season back with Coach Mack. Uh, it's the first full season back since 2018 and a shot at that playoffs and a schedule that maybe uh, looks a little bit favorable compared to the way that it could break. Bob, thanks for such a great day. Breakdown of the Wildcats. Uh, looking forward to the season. Looking forward to catching you up, catching up with you down the road. Rob, it's been great to be with you and hope everybody has a great season. Thanks.